So we are recording. And today we're going to go through the uh, CMA and the cloud CMA. The CMA through the Paragon program and then the cloud CMA, uh, which is the third party plugin. Must have been somebody just coming on here. Okay, so now we're on the Clarity dashboard, our brand new look. Uh, looks like a phone now or an iPad, kind of cool. So we can get to everything really easy, and of course we can get to the uh, cloud CMA here. I'm going to show you both ways. Uh, we'll do the regular CMA first uh, before we do the cloud CMA, because it makes more sense uh, going through the other way. So we'll go to Paragon. And I'm not sure, has everybody gone through the uh, regular CMA on the uh, Paragon program? I never have. No, that's all right. I'm just curious because if you haven't, then it, uh, I need to show you how to get in and uh, edit some pages. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to show you right here at the top is where we go to the CMA. This is the CMA through the Paragon program. Uh, when we click on it, then we're going to be able to uh, create a presentation, op open a saved presentation. Uh, don't worry about this. We don't really need to worry about this uh, information over here because we're going to be going through it once we go and create a presentation. But before we create a presentation, we actually want to set up our uh, templated pages on the CMA. And to do that, we're going to go right here to Preferences. Uh, and over to the far right, we have three wizards, uh, Preferences, uh, Client Connect, and the CMA uh, wizard. So we're going to click on the CMA Preferences wizard. And that's going to open up uh, the wizard with nine pages. And we'll go through each page here. So we'll click on Start. And the first page that comes up is going to be the cover letter. So this is where you can actually enter in your cover letter if you want, and we do have the ability to uh, add three cover letters. Uh, we did, oh, there we go, okay. Three cover letters, uh, and if you're going to use one uh, more often than not, then all you have to do is just click on the default. So that one will always be used whenever you're doing a CMA. But when you're doing the CMA, you can also just click a drop down and pick the one that you want. Uh, you can enter the information in here, or if you have it already created in another program, you can copy and paste it in. If you have it in a uh, PDF formatted uh, file, we can just very easily upload it into the system. We don't have to copy and paste it. We can pull it right into the CMA and use it right from there. And I'll show you how we're going to do that a little bit later. So once we have that letter in there, uh, we're going to click Next. And this is going to be your cover letter. So again, same thing. Uh, put in your information, type out your cover letter if you have it somewhere else, copy and paste it, or again, we can upload a PDF file. Uh, age resume 123, I don't know why you'd have three resumes, but <laughs> maybe you're wearing different hats. <laughs> and again, you can pick the default for whichever one you're going to use. Uh, click Next. And this one is about company information. Now, um, some of you have access to this page and some of you do not. The ones who will have access are brokers. Uh, I have access because of my security level. Everybody else will not. And the reason for that is because they don't want you to create a file about the company. They want to give, the brokers want to give you the information so that they know what is going out into the community with regards to their business. Uh, so that's why it's, you can't edit it. You go to your broker and say, give me the file so I can include, include it in my uh, package. Let me click Next. Subject property detail, and then there's property one and property two. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, we're just going to leave it at su uh, subject property one. Uh, we'll click Next. And about your final comment. So, uh, good place to add any... Um, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Somebody who says something nice about your referrals. Yeah. So you can put all that information in there. And again, we can upload it into the system. I'll show you that later. So we click Next. Uh, this is going to ask you the theme of your uh, presentation. Now, you don't have to worry about picking and choosing the right one. I know that 
there are certain ones here which kind of reflect colors which may not be the brokerage of your choice. Uh, but that's okay because we can use just like a basic one or a modern one that kind of makes it a little more generic. Uh, but don't worry about it. Whatever you choose here, we can always choose it uh, or, or pick a different one when we actually do the, uh, the, the uh, CMA. So we'll click Next. And this asks you if you would like to put a footer into your package. And the footer, of course, is information that is going to go on the bottom of every single page of your documentation. I don't have that. Uh, do you have this? Yeah. Yep. Put a check mark in the box. So yeah, if you were looking at this, then you put a check mark in the box and it will appear. So this allows you to put your photo, your company logo, left or right side, center alignment, et cetera, et cetera. But again, remember, this will all go on every single page of your uh, CMA, but it won't go on the first page, of course. And again, if you choose not to or you are going to uh, use a footer, you can change that at any time. So we click Next, and this asks if you'd like to put a disclaimer in your package. Um, the second one and the third one are exactly identical. I'm not sure why. Might have been somebody's last day at work and they were having some fun. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, you can also choose No Disclaimer. Click on next and it says congratulations you're all done. Well not really. Uh, we've just created the pages that are part of the template. Now uh, once you've done that here's how you're going to get to the template if you want to update any pages. I mean you could go back to the preferences if you wanted to and go right back to the CMA preferences and you go through page by page. You don't have to do it that way. Uh, if you go to preferences and this time instead of going to the right we're going to the left. So you see right here where it says Preferences CMA. When you click on that, it's going to open up a menu system on the left-hand side. And these are all the pages that you can actually uh, enter into your documentation. Let's see here. Da, 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 da. For some reason, oh, there we go. Come on. I don't know if we have a slow connection or there we go. So you can just very easily go in and choose each page there and edit it right from there if you'd like. <coughs> and remember I said that you could actually upload any other documentation to the CMA providing that it was a PDF file. Well if you scroll all the way down on this list here it is right here. The green plus sign and click on the upload document and that will actually allow you to choose a PDF file, give it a name, upload it, and it will then appear on the column of your uh, pages that can be used to print off for your CMA. All the instructions are there, make sure that it's a PDF type, uh, file name, characters, etc., etc., and you're good to go. So uh, that's how we get in and we actually edit the pages that we've uh, gone through already through our preferences wizard. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to go through from start to finish and we're going to do a CMA. So we'll click on the CMA button at the top and we're going to click on create presentation. <coughs> and this will open up the six steps in creating a CMA through the Paragon system. Steps one through six. Now after I leave today you're probably going to have some questions maybe about how we actually did this. So here's what you're going to do uh, if you can't get in touch with me because I'll take, I'll take your call. Uh, you go up here to the top where you see help, top right hand corner and click on help and that's going to open up into a uh, secondary page because we still have Paragon up here at the top. I'm just really slow here and there's my uh, dashboard. So I go to Paragon Help and it shows me all of the topics that I can actually uh, use here. So one of them is CMA, so I'll click on CMA. And again, I'm just waiting for the page to load here. And here we are. So adding a subject property, et cetera, et cetera. But the important part is right here, steps one through six. 
exactly the same as we saw over here on Paragon. Steps one through six. So if you go over to help, uh, you can click on any one of these and it will then show you quick start guides on how to get started and put together your CMA. So I just clicked on the step, step one here and here we are. I'm going to move this over here. So, we'll very well laid out step-by-step -step guide how to do it. Uh, if you're more inclined to actually want to watch a video, we can do that too because right at the top here, we have video. And when I click on it, it will take me to four uh, recorded videos on how to put together a CMA presentation. One, two, three, four. So again, the great thing about because we have uh, Paragon open in the secondary window when our help file here is if I want to watch that video and I click on it, the video will open up. I'm ready to go. It's 35 minutes long for the first uh, video. I click play. All right, let's get this webinar started. Thanks for joining me. So, great thing about it, I can actually watch it. I can pause it. I can go back to Paragon. I can follow through with the steps that they've uh, described, going back and forth. Uh, makes it very easy to uh, understand and learn how to put that package together. So again, quick start guides or videos, your choice. All you have to do is go to the help file, top right hand corner, click on CMA. It takes you through to uh, all the instructions. So uh, let's begin our CMA. So first step is the uh, presentation name. So uh, you'll either put in uh, your uh, client name or your uh, client's address, your choice. Once you've done that, we'll click continue. Now I want you to notice up here in the top left hand corner where we see presentation name, you're now going to see a green check mark, which means I've completed that page, I don't have to go back. And that's a great thing about it is because when we go through each of these steps, all of the steps will have a gray check mark. And when you complete it, it's green, so you don't have to go back, you know it's been done. So uh, presentation name, next uh, is the subject property. So we've got three choices here. We can use an existing MLS number, we can load a subject property that has already been in previously uh, from a listing that's been a uh, temporary listing to uh, subject properties. Or this one, which we're going to choose, which is create a new subject property. And for this example, it's going to be residential. We're still waiting for it here to chug along. Okay. So here we are. Now, uh, this may look familiar to some of you and some of you may not look familiar. Does it look familiar to you? Does it look familiar to you? Yeah, okay. Because this is the listing input form. So if you don't have access to listing input, then uh, this is what it looks like. This is the form that you would use. So what you're going to do with this is that you will enter in the details that you'll have about the property that you're going to do the CMA on. Now, it's not a requirement. You don't have to enter in any information. But the reason why we have it here is because uh, when you start to enter details about this property and then save it, it'll create a partial listing, which means that you can actually go back and complete the details that you did not, did not uh, enter the first time around. Basically what it is, it's a time saver. So that if you have some details, you can enter them in. You go to your, your presentation. You uh, get the listing, you come back to the office, you don't have to do it from start to finish. All you have to do is finish off the temporary or partial uh, listing that you've already started. Uh, the red boxes are required fields and the green boxes or teal or whatever color that is, uh, P are partials. So when you go to save the listing, uh, It'll save it no matter what. You don't have to have all of the fields entered into this, uh, this area. Uh, so when you do save it, it will save it, again, as a partial listing, which is a four or five digit number. 
Uh, and when that is uh, saved, then the person or yourself will go up here to listings and then go to partial listings. And when you do that, you'll be able to put in the partial number, bring up that listing form, and then continue and enter uh, the rest of the details for that form. So um, because I didn't save it, it's not going to jump down to client, so I'm just going to click down to client. But again, you'll notice that subject property is still gray. I haven't completed it, but that doesn't matter because I don't have to have everything green in order to print this off and present it. It's just uh, helping me to, to be sure that I've got the major things completed. So client, uh, again, I can create a new client or I can go to a list of clients. So if I go to a list, it'll just bring up my contact folder. And then I can just very simply click on the name and it places it into my CMA. So now we've got a green check mark, got the name, I'm good to go. I always recommend that you put your sellers in your contact folder. I know I talked to a lot of people who don't do that. Uh, they usually put buyers in their contact folder, but I recommend putting your sellers in there because of a new feature that we have that I'll um, I'll likely show you before we end off today. It's a uh, new beta format of uh, seller's property that allows you to send them details about how many hits uh, their property is actually getting through Paragon, which is really helpful because, again, if you've got somebody who's really, you know, anxious and they're calling you all the time, who's looking at it, where, blah, 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 right? This uh, allows you to set it up so that information is going to go to them and you don't have to worry about it. It's going to keep them happy right so that you can get on with your business because we know that uh, in this business you get busy with three or four or five people you're juggling a lot juggling a lot of balls you don't want to drop any so having that uh, let me just show you real quickly here just so that I can uh, make it visual here for you uh, so again you're going to put your sellers in your contact folder and again the reason why is because when I go into my contacts uh, and I click on one of the names, you'll see a button on the left here that says Seller Activity. So uh, I can't set this up because I don't have any listings myself, uh, but what you are going to do is that you are going to set up your client, your uh, seller, uh, and then you're going to add your listing the listing that you've just gotten for that particular client, right? Uh, so you'd click on select the listing. Of course, I don't have any because uh, nothing's going to come up. But all of your listings are going to come up from years ago. So just remember that. And again, you see that right there, beta? Beta means that we're it's in testing phase. It's not polished. The bugs haven't been worked out of it. So use this with caution. Um, what I recommend you do is this. Uh, set yourself up self, set yourself up as a client and then add the listing to your profile so that you are going to get the emails so that you can look at what you're getting and then you can just simply forward it on to your client that way they're not going to get something blind and then call you and you're not going to have any idea what it is so set yourself up in the contact folder with your name your email address go to seller activity, add listing, and add that listing that you want to get the details from. And again, uh, if you have more questions or queries, contact me at the office. I'll walk you through it. We'll set it up. We'll get it, uh, we'll get it going. But again, it is in beta. Remember that. So, um, you know, there are, what's that? Oh, there are likely bugs in it, and that's why we're, you know, we're, we're letting the horse out of the gate because we want everybody to kind of test it and find out what's going wrong. So if you see something that's not right or doesn't display, then we need you to communicate that back to us so that we can make sure that it gets uh, polished and works exactly exactly the way that we want. Okay, so uh, back to our CMA. We have our client in there. Uh, now we're going to click on Next. And now we're going to go and grab the comparables. So we will click Add Comparable. So again, we have all kinds of choices here. Uh, we've got all of our classes here. Uh, we've got an MLS search, address search, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, for this example, we're just going to 
pick the residential. We don't really need anything on this side. Uh, we'll get into more detail once we go to the cloud CMA and show you how some of these things work. But for the most part, for the CMA, you're not going to worry about it. So we'll click on residential. It's going to open up our search form. And then we're just simply going to do a search. So let's put some details in here. So I will pick a price of uh, 250 Listing status uh, active, sold, region, Halifax, Dartmouth, district, Bedford, and 20A, sub-district. Now, uh, because we have all active, actually, let me change that. I'm just going to pick active. If I was to choose all active, that would mean I'm going to pick active, pending approval, and lease properties. We don't deal in any lease properties, uh, so I'm just going to pick active, and then save it. Now, uh, our count's going to be quite high here because, again, I haven't picked a timeline. But when we go to our timelines, we have uh, input date, firm date, and general date. If you don't have general date, um, call me later today. I will help you get that into your uh, form. But you should have general date. And the reason for that is because input date is just merely when it got put into the system. That's all it means, nothing more. Firm date is the sold date. You can't find an active property with a sold date. So that's why we're using the general date, because the general date is for multi-status properties. So general date, I'll go back six months, got 27 properties. Uh, I can further refine that. We'll go for a do, 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 do. detach. You have 16? Yeah. Yeah, mine hasn't come up yet. I saved it, but it's still uh, still thinking here. Now I have one. Hmm. Take that out again. Let's try single family. Six. I'll use six for the example. We don't need any more. So I'll click search. And now I'm going to have a new button available at the top of my uh, available properties here in just one second when it loads up. So I'm just waiting for the listings to come up here. Okay, so here are my six listings. So I can pick and choose whatever ones I want. Uh, I don't need to pick the six. I can, uh, you know, if I found there were 15 of them, I want to narrow it down to about eight or nine. I can pick and choose uh, the ones I want. Uh, this example, I'm going to pick all of them. So I'll click on the check all checked box right here. So from there, I'm going to use all of these properties. Uh, and then I'm going to click add to CMA. It just gives me a pop-up here to be sure that what I'm selecting is uh, what I'm wanting. So selected is six. And I now have all those properties uh, because, again, I have a green check mark, right? So I click on Next, and now I can make adjustments to the properties. Uh, so if I know if there's any adjustments that need to be made, I can make them here. Let me just move this out of my way here so we can uh, work this. Uh, right now, we've got a number of different fields that are in here that uh, I've placed. Yours are going to be different, of course. But you can add any field that you want or remove any field you want because if you do not enter anything into it, it won't print it anyway. 
so if I want uh, an extra field, I'm going to go up here to fields. So the right-hand column will be everything that's in my current uh, adjustments. Anything on the left, I can add, right? I've got all of this information here. Let's see. Uh, just going to find one here. So building age, if I wanted that one, I could just very simply click it and then add it in the middle. Or if I double click it, it jumps right over. If I don't want it there, I can click it and remove it. Or I can double click it and it's gone. But it won't go back in the uh, alphabetical order. It'll always go down to the bottom until I close it off and open it back up again. So I'll put it back over and it's over there. And then I'll click save. Yep. Uh oh. It was just the button on the chair. <laughs> okay, so uh, just for an example, let's say that we. Uh, you know, I know there's no garage on this property, but let's say that we did know uh, that there's a garage that was added to this property. Uh, so I can go down here to garage to the right and I can uh, put in $20,000. Uh, let's see here in the block. And as soon as I uh, click outside the box, it does automatically just update the uh, price there on the bottom right hand side. So any adjustments that I want to make, I can make them very easily here to update that uh, price. Now, if I knew there was a garage there, uh, it burned down, and now I want to take that off. Uh, so all I'm going to very simply do is just put a minus sign in front of that 20, click outside the box, and uh, now it comes off of that price. So anything on the plus side, you don't need any uh, sign. Uh, anything on the negative side, you're going to put a negative uh, sign in there to take it off of the price. So once you do that, you can just very simply navigate through each of the uh, properties with the red uh, navigation right here. If you have none to make, then we just can very simply just click next. Let's move this. So again, if you look over here on the left hand side, you've got step four. Everything's green. How did it turn green? We didn't do anything. But actually we did because we went through the preference wizard. And we uh, created a theme, a footer, and a disclaimer. So again, remember I said it wasn't written in stone. Uh, so I can actually pick and choose whatever one I want for this individual CMA that I'm going to create. Uh, once I've done that, I just click Next. Jumps down to Footer. Again, I can adjust, change, uh, click Next. Down to Disclaimer. I already did that. And I'm going to click Next. And now this is going to jump down to step five important step okay so uh, let me just get this where I, there Whoa, there okay so uh, step five will be all of the pages available to print for your CMA and here's how it works anything that has a check mark on it will be printed and will become your template so the next time you go in to do another CMA all the ones that you had previously checked off will continually be checked off. Uh, you're going to see a couple that are grayed out right here, subject property detail, summary of adjustments, simply because I didn't complete my subject property and I didn't make any adjustments. That's why they're grayed out. Uh, we can actually um, change the order of this list. Uh, so if I want my CMA summary, I can click on it and just very simply drag it up. So I can change the order of these when I go to combine it and print it off. So any one that I want to move, I'm going to include it. Just click on it, drag it up. There we go. Okay. So once you have all of the pages uh, selected that you're going to actually put together for your CMA, and again, remember at the bottom, 
we have our upload document here for the green button. So any other document I want to include in the CMA, I can just click on it and it opens up and it uh, asks me to uh, name the file, go and find it, upload it into my uh, CMA package. Okay, so um, here are all the pages. So when I click on them, uh, it's just going to show me the page to the right so I can actually look at it see what it looks like, get an idea of that's, if that's the information that I want. Uh, bad choice because there's no company info. Uh, I don't know if any, anything's going to come up here for my comparable, but let's see. Yep, there we go. So once I've gone through that, all I have to do is just click on step six. Now if I click next here, it's going to take me down each individual page. One, two, three, four, right? You don't need to do that. Just go right to six, click on it. It says, now you need to generate your CMA. Perfect. Click start. I'll wait for you. <laughs> So it's just going to take a couple of minutes here to uh, combine it all, put it all together for our package. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay. So here is our CMA all put together and I can just scroll through it and I can see it page by page so I can look at it before I actually uh, do anything with it. I also have my navigation on the left so I can uh, take that scroll bar and I can just scroll up and down and just look at it to make sure everything looks like it's going uh, to work. So I've got 17 pages. Uh, now I can do a number of things with it. So right here I can email this. Uh, to my client if they want it. I can email it to myself. Um, over to the right here, this is where I'm going to print the documentation. Uh, this is where I'm going to download it. This is just a save flag. If you go to a certain page and you're working on it, you can just uh, current view or copy, copy or open a new window. Uh, I'm not sure. Let's see. Go to first page, last page, handle tool, etc. Just navigations, that sort of thing. So from here, uh, we've got our package all put together. Uh, make sure that you do click on save the components so that we do actually have this saved. It should actually save it automatically, but I always recommend clicking on that save component so that we uh, make sure that we're not going to lose it. Uh, so again, email it, print it, or download it to your computer. And that's the CMA. Any questions on that? Pretty straightforward. And again, like I said, if you get stuck, you're not sure, go right over to the help file, click on help, click on the CMA button, it takes you right through the six steps, uh, including the uh, videos as well to watch. Okay? Hi, it's Sandy. Where does it save the components when you click on save CMA? Oh, where does it go? Yes. Right here, CMA, and then yes. save presentation. Okay, thank you. Welcome. So uh, we'll close off that CMA and the preferences. And now we're going to do the cloud CMA. So once I show you the cloud CMA, the odds are you're not going to go back to the CMA I just showed you. <laughs> and now you're saying, why didn't you show me the other one first? I have to go through the process. So again, there's two ways to get into our CMA, the cloud CMA here. I don't recommend going to this button unless you have a CMA already saved. Uh, because with the uh, Paragon access to the CMA, Cloud CMA, uh, there's a couple of ways that we're going to do the CMA. Uh, we're going to get the CMA program to actually find the comparables for us. Uh, I'm going to go through that and show it to you. And then the second way, I'm going to show you how we're going to actually find the comparables and then we'll upload them into, into the cloud. So uh, now I should remind you again that uh, Cloud CMA is a third-party plugin, which means that another company uh, owns and manages it. 
uh, and they um, are paid the service so that they can take our data and make it look into a nice, pra nice uh, presentation and package. So we're going to go to resources and we're going to go to Cloud CMA. Now, if you see five tabs, Home, CMA, Buyer's Tour, Property and Flyer, that means that you've already signed up for your free CMA account. If you happen to see a registration page, that means you haven't registered and you need to register your name uh, to have your free account. So once you've done that, uh, we'll go to CMA. We can also do a buyer tour, a property, and a flyer. Uh, I'm going to go to flyer for just one second uh, before I do the CMA. So I'm going to click on flyer. Come on. And then I'm just going to click on uh, one of the ones that I did here. View. And this will open up to my flyer. Okay, perfect. So, um, this is what I recommend that you do as a suggestion. Because when you do an open house, we all know that open houses are for us, right? We need to get more clients. We need to get people in. Uh, we need to get names and numbers. Uh, so the challenge is when someone walks in the door, how do I get their name and their number without them feeling like I'm going to bite their head off or I'm pressuring them, right? And this is what I recommend that you do. Uh, you go to the uh, presentation or you go to the open house with your laptop. Uh, and you bring this up on the screen. And as soon as somebody comes in, they'll ask you, oh, do you have a listing cut? Because that's how they're programmed, because they've gone to an open house and people give them paper, right? And you say, well, I just ran out. I don't have any more. Or, you know what, my printer jammed this morning and I couldn't get them printed. But guess what? Uh, if you give me your name and your email address, I'll email you this file. Uh, you'll have all the details. And my contact, if you want any further details, uh, now, also remember that when you get the email, if you do not want to hear from me again, there is a disclaimer at the bottom. You just click opt out and you'll never hear from me again and I will honor that. Can I get your name and your email address? And people will say, yeah, sure, that sounds good to me. Now you've got a contact, which is why you've gone to the open house. Don't waste your time and money uh, standing there hoping you got to do something about it, right? So somebody says, you know what, you're not getting my email, you're not getting my uh, uh, email address or my name or what have you, uh, I don't want to give it to you. Hey, no problem. You have a cell phone? Yep, I sure do. Uh, do you have the scan code program on your uh, phone, your app? They're like, well, what's that? You say, well, see that scan button there, that QR code? If you scan that, I can get it into your phone and you'll have it right on your phone. And they're like, whoa, that's pretty cool. So they go to their phone, they go to the scan code app, they scan that in, and they've got all the details in the phone, including you, because you're in there now, right? You've got your name and your number in their phone, so now they know who to contact any further because there's nothing to look for. It's on the phone. So you've got two ways to get contacts, right? Ask them for it and email it to them or get them to scan it, and now uh, they've got your details. So now let's go back to the CMA. I'm going to show you one other thing here real quick. Uh, I'm just going to my home button here. After today, if you want to get, uh, if you want to learn this all over again, uh, you'll see on the home page that there is uh, creating, uh, getting started with a cloud CMA and creating reports with email. Right, great videos. They're about a uh, half hour to an hour long. Uh, you can walk through it and uh, and learn how to do this. Uh, so we'll go back to our CMA. And I'm going to create a new CMA. Now this is going to be a lot faster and it's going to look just as professional. But again, remember, you have to go through your um, templated pages right? 
I'm going to show you a couple of ways to get there, but I'm going to do it after we do the CMA, and I'll show you why when we get there, or tell you why. Uh, so I'll create a new CMA. We'll click on that button. And all we have to do now is uh, enter our client name. Uh, we're going to enter the address. This is important, of course, but the great thing about it is if you watch my screen, you see how the addresses come up? All of the addresses are in the database. So all you have to do is start, start typing here until the address comes up and then click on it. So now I've got the exact address that I want. <coughs> and I'm going to scroll down a bit here because we're going to get the program to do the CMA for us. We're going to get the program to actually uh, gather the uh, comparables from that address. So I'm going to do what's called the quick and dirty by proximity and automatically find listings near the subject property get at least 10. I always say do 20 because that way uh, once you do 20 you can filter through and find the ones that you want. So you're going to get more than you need but you're going to be able to filter through them and narrow it down. Uh, we'll do it you know for six months you can do it for a year for as long as you want and then we're ready to go. Now one other thing I want to show you as we scroll up here uh, that's going to help us out by the quick and dirty is that if I put in my uh, bedrooms and baths, it'll kind of help to narrow down what exactly I'm looking for. Uh, if I go to advanced info, you know, I could do building size, lot size, dimensions, taxes, blah, blah, blah. You know, I can put in extra area, extra details if I want. But again, um, try it with and try it without uh, and see what comes up because, again, it depends on the properties that you want to be able to uh, compare. And uh, the square footage. Um, square footage, um, you could or couldn't, I'm not sure if that is a TLA or MLA, right? I have to find out and then uh, decide, but I think it should be labeled whether it should be MLA or TLA. Uh, so from there, I'm just going to go fetch the listings. So this will go to the uh, MLS database, our database, it'll find all those listings that are needed and pop them into a secondary page here. Okay. So, uh, scroll down my page a little bit. Here's my subject property in the middle. That's, uh, what color is that? A dark blue? Purple, yeah, that's purple. I think I'm colorblind. <laughs> Green, red, blues, and then we have withdrawn, right? Uh, so here's our listings that we've uh, gathered. Uh, low, median, average price, and a high price. Now, uh, if you're going to suggest a price for your uh, subject property, here's where you're going to put it in right here. And then when you click update, it'll give a drop down menu and then I can put in more expenses here if I want to add that into my, my uh, CMA package. Okay? I can add a row here and I can put in as much information as I want to kind of help out my uh, prospective client. So when I scroll down my page, it's going to show me all of the properties that came up. So expired three. I've actually got one more here, but again, when I excuse me, grabbed all the listings, it grabbed more than I needed uh, because it's making suggestions for me. So uh, some are checked, which means they are the ones that will be included in the CMA, but if I don't want it, I just simply take the check mark out and it won't be used or printed in my CMA. But if I do want it, I click on it, pops back in. Uh, if I want to change the order, I can very simply go to the left hand side of my bar here and there's a little uh, grab bar there. I can just simply grab it and drag it wherever I want it. Now the other thing, the details and adjustments are so simple in here, it's just uh, light years ahead of what we did before in the other CMA. So if I click details and adjustments, 
the whole property comes down, right, with the uh, features and uh, remarks, which is good because in the other one I couldn't see any of that stuff. I'd have to go back into the system and try to find it. So this is what's great about it, adjustments. I just type in garage, I put in 20,000, add it, go to my next one, extra room, 8,000, add it, right? So I can just very simply put it in, add it. I don't have to find it, search it, what have you. If I don't want it, just click the garbage can and it's back out again. Okay, details and adjustments, real simple. Close that back up, you're ready to go. So I've got all the properties that I want. All I have to do now is customize the report. So it'll take all the information that I've uh, gathered and created. It'll put it together in a little uh, package here, but it hasn't printed anything off yet. So remember in the last CMA that we did, we had all of the uh, pages that were available. Uh, with a little check mark that showed us that they would be uh, included in the package. In this one, it's just a little bit different, and that is, uh, you see the minus sign? Right now it says, My CMA Report. These pages will be printed. Uh, anything on the left, if it was there, will not be printed. So, for example, if I uh, went to, what is a CMA? I didn't want that in there because I want to be able to explain it. I can click that minus sign, and, and it jumps back over here. So it's not going to be used, but it is here for me to grab if I want it. So anything I do not want in my package, I simply click the minus sign and it's over here. If it's over on the left and I want it, I just simply click the plus sign, jumps back to the right, and now I can use it. So again, I have these grab tabs here on the right hand side. I can just very simply grab that and move it up or down wherever I want to put it in my package. Now, here's the pages that we're going to edit. We didn't go through a preference wizard. Uh, they're right here. But before I click on edit, I'm going to show you where you should be going to fix these pages up. Cover letter, agent resume, company, those things. So if you go right up to the very top of your screen, you're going to see settings. And I'm going to click on settings. So, here's my photo, it's going to be included, here's my company logo, uh, but what I'm looking for are the custom pages, which is right up at the top here in that black bar. So I click on custom pages, and now this drop down menu is going to show me all the pages that I can actually enter my details. If I want more, I can just create a page. If I don't want anything, I can just delete a page, right? So everything should be done in here before you go and do your CMA. Get all your pages uh, updated uh, with all current information and make sure that you save it. Uh, and we also have the ability to upload files too, right? So when you go to your custom pages, go to the very bottom uh, and you can upload PDF files right here just like we did in the other uh, CMA. Now, uh, something else I want to show you here that's really interesting. Now, you may use it or you may not. But for me, I want to show you this. So I'm going to go slow here because I want you to be able to follow me. I don't want to lose you in this, uh, process, this, uh, this uh, process. So if I go to Paragon and I go to send out an email right here, compose email, I want you to no notice what's on the bottom here. Just taking a second to load. Click here to find out what your home is worth. That would be pretty cool. Because a lot of times if you're dealing with somebody and you can't quite get that hook in their mouth to pull them in, uh, you can put this on your uh, email uh, so that you're going to give them more information that's going to prompt them or maybe want them to call you to get more, more details, right? You're giving them information without them having to do anything else other than get an email from you. So how did I do that and get it set up? So it's very simple. If I go back to my cloud CMA and I'm in my uh, edited pages up to settings and then down to custom pages, actually it'll just come right up as soon as I go to settings. 
It's right here, lead generation. So when I click on that, here I have options. Uh, ignore that first one, Zillow Tech Connect. We don't deal with that. That's American. Um, this one, here's a link to your What's My Home Worth uh, website. Uh, you can generate it so that it can be put into Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. Uh, you can also uh, put a button on your website. Uh, you can put it into uh, WordPress if you happen to use that. Uh, automatic, automatically email web link leads. Um, I would recommend that, so leave that in there. Um, add reviews and ratings to your cloud so you may report. Again, don't worry about these. Because what you're going to do is that you're going to highlight one of these links. And again, you may not remember to do this, but if you want this in your email, call me later today or in the week or what have you, and I'll walk you through the setup uh, of getting this uh, put into your email. But this is how you do it. So uh, here's a link for What's My Home's Worth website. So I'm going to highlight all of that text, and I'm going to copy it. Okay? That's all I need to do. Highlight it, copy. I go back to Paragon. I go to my uh, preferences. I go to email. When the email opens up, I'm looking for my signature right here. So um, I'm going to pick default. I'll find one where it's not in there currently. Okay? So, uh, here's what you do. You go to the bottom and type this in. Click here to find out what your home is worth. And I'd also add this. Whoops. So that way when they get that CMA, uh, they'll contact you because you can give them more uh, details about what they're actually looking at, right? So remember, I have that hyperlink copied into my uh, clipboard or whatever they call that. What am I talking about when, they, when you put something on the uh, clipboard, the clipboard, right? So I'm going to highlight, click here. And when I do that, I'm going to go right up here. See that little chain? Uh, that's to insert a link. So I'm going to click on it. And in the top line, I'm just very simply going to right click on my mouse and paste it in. That's all I have to do. Insert. And there it is. Hyperlink. Save it, set it as the default, compose an email, and there it is. So watch this. Uh, I'm just going to put any, it doesn't matter because I'm going to click on send. Uh oh. Let's try that again. There. I just needed to get to this window. So your uh, client or prospective client gets this email and they see this link. Oh, what's this? Click. Goes to the website. Get a free personalized report. Enter your uh, location. So I mean it says city, state, or zip. We gotta change that. But I think it's going to an American server, that's why. But don't worry. It'll still come up. And there it is. Bedford. Right? You might want to put that in your email as well. That when the link comes up, ignore the Americanization. Right? Uh, so, locate the property. We found your property. Now all they have to do is put in their name, their email, uh, and their phone number if they wanted to. And they click send me. 
The program does all the work. It sends them a CMA professionally uh, put together. They go through it and they go, wow, that's pretty cool. They call you and say, well, that was pretty amazing. Come on over. I want you to list my house. So again, if you want more details on that, you want me to help you set up that uh, link in your email, give me a call. I'll walk you through it. We'll do a screen share. We'll get it all working. No worries. Whoops. I guess I should learn how to print. Okay, so that is the lead generation in uh, Cloud CMA. Now let's go back to our CMA and finish that off. Now for the sake of the example, uh, it didn't publish it, but I'm going to edit because I jumped out and I'm just going to go back in here and edit. Because every time you work in something in this Cloud CMA, it always remembers it. It's always there because it's online, right? So this comes back to my first page, the criteria. So I'm going to go back here to customize because that's where I left off. And I'm all ready to go. Now, uh, here's where we can get really uh, technical. Uh, photo with a map. Uh, theme is purple. I can pick any color practically of the rainbow in here, uh, including franchise colors. I don't know if Keller Williams is in here or not. Dark red. We use that for the sake of the example. So, uh, one other thing I want to point out here is that um, because the Cloud CMA is free, uh, you may not see this immediately, but you will see it uh, after a few months of use. Uh, do you see on the left-hand side there where it says Cloud CMA Power Pack? And I'm looking at it going, hey, I'd like to have one of those. And I move my mouse over and watch what happens. Point. Can't get it. I have to get my covers. Well, actually, you're going to get it for free for one month. It's a time trial, right? You put in your credit card details. You get it for a month free. If you don't want to cancel it, if you like it, continue on. It's like um, eleven or twelve dollars a month, right? Maybe you want to use it. Get in there, get some stuff. Uh, but as long as you have the subscription, you've got the goods. You stop your subscription, the stuff goes back out, right? So just to remember. Same over here, right? Uh, One-click reports, uh, add a new report, pages, don't worry about that. Uh, all we're worrying about right now is the CMA report. So we go up here, publish the report. Again, it's just going to take a few moments to uh, package that up for us. And we're going to have some options. So my garbage can, of course, is I'm going to delete it. If I don't want it, edit it. I can go back and change and update anything that I placed within the uh, CMA. I've got view, unpresent, email, and share. So if I click on share, it's just going to allow me to uh, take a link and put it into um, uh, Facebook, Twitter, wherever, whatever, right? Just gives you a hyperlink to put uh, that where you want it. Uh, here's a QR code reader as well. So if you want to scan that yourself and put it right into your phone, uh, you can do that. Uh, email it. So you can email that right from here to whomever you want. This is what we're going to look at. Uh, view and present. Now, view is for you. You're going to click on the view, you're going to look at it, you're going to go through it. Yeah, looks good, looks great, I'm pleased with it. We're going to go and present it. Uh, again, I don't recommend uh, printing this off, right? Don't waste your ink, don't waste your money on uh, paper and all that other stuff. We have the technology. You have to go uh, to your appointment, take your laptop, uh, and click on present. So this is going to bring it up. Do, do, do. 
do, do. There we go. Now, um, we have a satellite view of the property right here. Uh, we could have uh, taken uh, the snapshot of the property and put it in there and loaded it up. Uh, that's very easy. Um, if you want more instructions, I'll try to go through that with you and uh, if you can follow along to be able to get that into uh, your program. Uh, I recommend doing that because the satellite photo is pretty bland. Uh, There's really nothing to look at. But I'll show you how we can get that photo in there in just a moment. Uh, so we've got all this navigation at the top. All you have to do is hit your F11 key and you've got a full screen. So you're sitting there with your client and you're ready to go. Bottom right hand corner is your menu, your navigation. Click to the right. Hey, there I am. Click. Here's your property in the middle and here are the properties we're going to talk about in the selected colors. Next. Okay, sold listings, next. Recent home sale, blah, 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 blah. I don't have to go through it exactly. So here's our first property, sold, 290, okay? Bed, baths, square footage. So now uh, you can't see it, but look to the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. You see the arrow down now? Uh, it's available, so I can click down and it will give me photos uh, and description of the property, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Actually, I don't think it does give description. I think it's just giving me photos. Oh, more. Okay. So, navigate to the right. Go to my next property. Right? So, it's all right in here for you. I'm just going to race through this here. We're on a Wi-Fi here, so that's why it's a little slow. Active listings. What's that? It's not very good? No. So we're just going to get through this because I want to get to the end here just to show you what it looks like. Okay, so average of comparables, sold property analysis. Uh, some fa pricing factors to consider, next steps, commission distribution, intelligent pricing, right? Some good information. Then it says, thank you. Click here for the full CMA with more details or enter your email address below and send a copy, right? Uh, choice is yours. You can send that to your client if you want, or you might just want to close that window off real quick and say, what did you think, right? Or you can click back home. Hit your F11 key again and get your navigation back. So what do you think of that presentation? You probably use this rather than the other one, right? So let me show you how to get that photo into your package. I recommend that you do that. You gotta make yourself look as professional as possible because the first thing they're gonna ask is, why did you put a satellite photo there? So here's how we're, we're gonna do this. And again, because it's recorded, you'll be able to play it back and, and, and watch it a few times. Whoops, I think I clicked on the wrong button. Just one second. Yeah, I did. Okay, so I'm going to edit. Okay, so here's my address, and here's the uh, photo optional choose file here, right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to get that photo uh, from the internet and then dump it in here. So here's how we're going to do it. Go to a blank page. Uh, go to Google. Okay. And what we're going to do is go to Maps. Top right-hand corner. See the nine boxes? That's your navigation. Click on the nine boxes and go down to maps, top right corner. So uh, all we have to do is put in our address, 35 Landsberg Road, Bedford, search. Hit 
it's taken. There it is, 35 Landsberg Road. So uh, what we need to do is we need to get the street view. I can click right here and do it real fast. Um, or I can t click this little guy down here on the bottom right corner and click on it and then drag it right to the front of my property and let go. Oh, not a good picture. Looks like there's construction going on there. I'll pick the next house. Oh, again, the computer here is just so slow that uh, I went to uh, bird's eye view. Yeah. Okay, click here. <laughs> All right, come on, go. What's that? You can't? You can do a 3D, sh you could do a um, aerial view, might work. Okay, so I'm going to take this house here. So I'm going to click on my plus sign because I want to move in there a little closer. Um, there's a couple of ways I can do this. Uh, the first way is I'm just going to copy the screen, paste it into paint, and then edit it. Uh, the second way is a program called Snipping Tool. Okay, If you're using a PC machine, uh, you go down to your Start button, uh, and you search for anything, you type in Snipping Tool. Okay? And then you just click on it. And what this is going to allow you to do, I'm going to click New. Uh, just allows me to highlight the house. It was that fast, right? I go up to File. I go Save As. I'll save it to the uh, desktop, and we'll call it House One. Everybody with me? Save it. So I go back to my cloud CMA. I choose a file. I go to desktop. And there's my house. Open it. And there it is. So now when I publish this, the house is going to be in my uh, package instead of the uh, satellite view. I recommend you do that. Again, if you watch the video again, you're not quite sure how to do it, give me a call. I'll walk you through it. I'll do a screen, sh uh, say a, a screen share, uh, and we'll get that uh, process working on your computer so you're very good and comfortable with it. Now, this is the first way. We still have another way to go yet, okay? All we did on this first CMA, uh, Cloud CMA, was we did a quick and dirty, which was that the uh, program did all of our comparables, and we just followed the, uh, the steps to get it all put together. So what we're going to do this time, I'm going to close that off, uh, close that off, and uh, close this off. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to go right to my search. Because what we're going to do this time is we're going to find the comparables, and we're going to upload them into the, the, the cloud. So I will go by residential search. <clears throat> okay, now uh, everybody knows how to put in our comparables, right? You can put in a price, blah, 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 blah. But we're going to do it different this time. You're probably familiar with it. Uh, if you're not, then you're going to learn something new. But this is how I do it. I find it's faster and easier. Uh, I'm going to do a listing. Uh, active, uh, sold, uh, price 325, 
and I got over 161,000 properties, right? So I'm going to go date, I'm going to go 12 months back, and I'm down to 11,000. That's okay, because I'm going up here to my map, okay? So I've got my price, my status, my date, all I need. Click on the map. And it's going to default to uh, my brokerage or NSAR where I work. Uh, if you want to change where that is, then I recommend you take the preferences course and I'll show you how to move that dot to wherever you would like it to be every time you uh, log in. So uh, here we go. I'm going to focus on uh, 35 Landsberg Road. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to draw and I'm going to go to Polygon because I'm going to actually outline the area that I want to uh, find comparables. So I have a crosshair uh, and I just simply stop it and then click. I don't have to hold the mouse, I just click it. It puts a dot on my screen. And then I just move my mouse and then click. So each time I move my mouse, I'm not holding the button down, I'm just moving the mouse. And then I click. Click click. So I'm just placing, every time I click, I'm putting a point on the uh, map. And I'm going to finish it by clicking the X that I started with. And it loads the results. I have 53 listings that I found in this area. So here's our legend. So green is active and blue are sold. So I'm going to narrow that down. Too many for me, so I go to add to criteria. We'll go single family. If you click save and it doesn't actually disappear, just click outside the box. <laughs> Style. Oh, there it is. See. Okay, I've got 21 properties. That's fine. So, all I have to do is click search. And the reason why I did it on the map was that I'm kind of narrowing it down right to the neighborhood that I'm focusing on. I don't want, you know, the full parameters of my sub-district. I just want the neighborhood because there's enough in there that I can use. So from here, uh, I'm just going to pick and choo uh, choose the ones that I want, right? I'll go checked. So all that's going to do is bring all the checked ones to one page. But if I want to go back, I want to go and filter through and find another one. I click all, and they're all back. Click another one, checked. And then I can use these. now. Something I want to point out here uh, as well um, is that when you check all or check all right here, you have to remember that it's only checking off the first page, right? Because sometimes you'll have one, two, three or more pages. When you click on that checked, you're only checking the first page. Make sure you go to your second, third or fourth pages if you have them and check that again so that you'll get all of the listings. So. From here, I've got the ones that I want, so I'm going to go to Actions, because I have to get that into the cloud. Go down here, and CMA. Now, I can do a buyer's tour right from here, too, if I wanted to. Put together a little package for uh, my buyers and send them out on a little trip with uh, the package. So I'm going to go uh, CMA, and it's going to take it right into the cloud. So if I scroll down my page here, here are the listings on the left. All, all the MLS numbers got dumped in here. I could add more if I wanted to, if I put a comma, 
and then added in the other one, I can add in more if I wanted. If I know the numbers, I could just add them right in here. You don't have to type them in or copy and paste them. I know that I was teaching some people and they said, I didn't know you could do that. They're actually going into Paragon, finding it, copying it, pasting it in here. You don't have to do that. So, uh, go back. Got to put in all our other details like we did before. 35, Landsberg Road, Bedford, File, Desktop, House, Open. I don't need anything else. I don't need any of this. I don't need any of this. I've got everything. I've got my subject property, my name of my client. I've got my house. I've got my properties. Touch them. <coughs> so it's gathering the data from our uh, database. So we have five sold, three active. My map will pop up here in a second. Now, suggested list price. I can put that in. This time I will, just so that we can see what it looks like. Here's all my properties. One other thing I want to point out here is that if I add some details uh, to a property, so if I put in the garage here and I go 20,000 add, I'm going to show you something that's very, very important uh, as we go through here. If I do actually make an adjustment on a property, sorry? They stay. They stay. But what I have to do is I have to choose the format properly when I go to print it. Because if I don't choose the proper format, the adjustments are not going to show. So you'll do all that work. You'll go to print it off. You'll do a presentation and go, oh, my God, where did those go? Right? So... Keep that in the back of your mind for a second. I'm going to show you where we can change that. So I go up here, customize my report. Shows all my details. Everything looks good. Publish the report. So just taking a second here. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I think I just missed a step here. Just one second. Let me go back here. Just waiting for this to open back up here. Come on. Okay. All right, I'm just looking for that page here to change our um, printing process here. Just one second. Oh, sorry, here it is right here layout so before you actually go to publish it uh, go here to layout right now it says photo with map you click on that it's going to show you all of the options available um,
photo with maximum data, I believe is the one. So when you go to print it off, then your uh, the criteria for the adjustments will be there. Publish report. Present. <laughs> And it didn't grab that photo. Hmm. So there might be a glitch in the system. So I'll have to go back and uh, get in touch with them to see why that didn't load that photo. Because I definitely did load it in there, but it's not coming up. So there is a problem there. I'll have to get that fixed. I just want to check to see if the... Um, I can't remember the one I put the uh, adjustments on. I forgot already. Oh, I think I remember now. Second here. I think I got the wrong one, to tell you the truth. Oh, I did? Oh, uh, I think maybe you're right. Oh, did I? Okay. That would explain it. And likely that photo did go in there. Okay. Thank you for that. See what happens when you get old? <laughs> your eyes go, your brain I'll goes. Tell you right away. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for picking that up. So that's how you do your CMA, cloud CMA, when you're doing it within Paragon and you're grabbing your uh, comparables and then you're going to uh, actions and then uh, bring it right into the uh, CMA. Just grabs all the uh, MLS numbers, brings them right in. And there we go. See, now I'm curious because now I have to make sure that that works. Just so that we can satisfy our minds. Mine more than anyone's. Okay, fetch. Just publish it and make sure that it came up. Still didn't come up. So there is a glitch in the system. I have to go back to the office and I'll email them and find out why uh, why our picture is not coming up. So that is our CMA through Paragon, our cloud CMA through the uh, quick and dirty and through the uh, comparables through Paragon itself. So you're ready to go. Any questions?
Anybody online have any questions? And if you're trying to say something, I can't hear you. You have to take. You have to. What's that? Oh, I'm Ann. <laughs> well, that makes sense because I'm under her profile on on this. Well, I'm glad you told me that. Otherwise, you'd be sitting there going, <laughs> having a good laugh. Hi, Steve. It's Sandy. Hi. Um, I will connect with you later. I had to take a call when you were doing that signature um, thing. Yeah. Uh, to do the link to that. Uh, so I'll connect with you later another day and do that because I did. I missed the pretty much except for the first part, and the last part. <laughs> well, I can do it right now again if you want me to. Okay. Yeah, we'll see much more in a few minutes. Okay, that'd be lovely. Sure. Okay, so um, we're going to go to the uh, cloud CMA. Whoops. Once the CMA loads, I'm going to go up to the top right-hand corner and go to Settings. And click on Settings. And when that page loads, I'm going to go to the far right of the black banner here. Once that loads, here we go. Uh, we have Lead Generation. So I'll click on Lead Generation because that's going to allow us to uh, create a button for what's my homework. Uh, so we're going to highlight this right here. Now the other ones, of course, don't ignore that one for Zillow at the top. That's uh, American. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, you can put a button up there for that. Uh, and also, if you have a website, uh, this will create a button for your website, what's my homework for it on your website. Uh, so we're going to highlight this line, right click, copy it. Uh, then we're going back to Paragon because we want to put this in our signature. Uh, so uh, we're going to go to Preferences. And on the left-hand side, we're going down to Email. And when that opens up on the left, we're going to go and look for Signature. So here we have it, Email Signature. Uh, we have some options here. You might already have yours created, but if not, you can click Add New uh, and just put your uh, details and everything in there. There's a little template in there for you. There we go. Uh, also, if you were looking to get your photo in there or you had an updated photo, you just click on the photo uh, and you click on that little tree there. That will allow you to actually uh, search your hard drive uh, and get a new photo into the, uh, into the signature. Okay. You just go here, upload image. Okay, so uh, got my uh, signature there. So I'm going to the bottom, and I'm going to type in, click here. Whoops. Click here to find out what your. Work. Okay, so uh, we're going to take click here and we're going to highlight it because that is where we want to put the hyperlink. So we highlight, click here, and then we go right up here to the top line and we're clicking on this uh, chain because that's the chain that allows you to insert the hyperlink. So when you click on it, it opens up into a new window and under the link URL, right click and then paste in that link. All you have to do then is click insert and you're done. So you can do that for any other email signature. If you have a signature on another email program or what's that? Yeah, just highlight it and do the same thing and put the hyperlink into that uh, click here and whatnot. And uh, 
always do it yourself. Like practice it, put in an address, put your email address in there, and just look and see what the package looks like. It looks very similar to the CMA that we just did on the Cloud CMA. But a great tool nonetheless. Did that work, Sandy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done it yet, but it should be fine. Okay, well this is being recorded, so uh, you can just watch the recording. And If you need more help, just give me a shout and I'll, I'll walk you through it. Thanks. Have a great day, Steve. Thanks, you too. Any other questions? All right. I'll end it off. Thank you for joining me today. As always, you can contact me at NSAR. Um, just go to the main page of Paragon at the top. You see MLS at NSAR.ns.ca. You can reach me there or uh, by phone. Just call the main office and they'll link you through.